In this example, our entity has the choice of settlement. Therefore, we need to determine if the entity has a present obligation. If the answer is yes, you need to account for cash settled. No, you need to account for equity settled. Now let's read through the information provided. On 1 January 20.11, ABC Limited grants the right to receive either cash payment equal to the value of 800 shares or 900 actual shares to an employee. The terms of the arrangement provide ABC Limited with a choice of settlement. The grant is conditional upon two years service. If the shares are issued, the shares must be held for two years after vesting date. On 1 January 20.11, ABC Limited's share price is 20 Rand. This price amounts to 22 and 23 Rand on 31 December 20.11 and 12. The fair value of the shares to be issued to the employee amounts to 19 Rand on 1 January 20.11. ABC Limited does not have a present obligation to settle in cash. Therefore, if they indicate to you that ABC does not have an obligation to settle in cash, you need to know that this will be equity settled. If equity settled, you need to know from your theory that you have to use the fair value at grant date. Grant date and measurement date is exactly the same date in this example, which is 1 January 20.11. And this is the date that the entity and the employee enters into the agreement. Then they have indicated to us that there is a vesting period, which is two years. Now, guys, very similar to our previous examples, you will have to calculate your share-based payment reserve for each year. At the end of year one, the amount will be 8550. Therefore, we will have to debit our employee costs credit our reserve account with 8550. At the end of year two, the total share-based payment amount should be 17,100. Therefore, we need to recognize 8,550. We debit our employee cost and we credit our share-based payment reserve. Now they indicate to us, if ABC Limited decides to opt for cash settlement, important guys, this is now at settlement date, therefore please refer to your theory block. They indicate to us that if they've accounted for the share-based payment transaction as if it were equity settled, but then they decide to settle this in cash, you need to account for repurchase of equity interest. How do you do that? Remember, we have recognized a total value in our share-based payment reserve of 17,100. We need to take this out. Therefore, we debit our share-based payment reserve with a 17,100. We now need to pay the value of 800 shares at 23 Rand per share. Therefore, credit bank 800 times 23, this will be 18,400. And our remaining balancing figure will be recognized in our retained earnings. ABC decided to opt for our cash settlement. Now, the fair value of our cash settlement on this date will be the 18,400, which is our 800 shares times 23 Rand. Now, when we compare this to the fair value of our equity, our equity's fair value at that date would have been 18,900, because this is our 900 shares times the 21 Rand. Important to note, this 21 Rand is not included in the given information. I'm telling you this now, that 
similar price of these shares equity settled we will use 21 rand okay now due to the fact that they have chosen cash settled which is 18,400 and this is lower than the 18,900 okay we do not have to recognize an additional expense okay now option number two and i'm going to write in option one please add this to your page and option two if the fair value of the share alternative was 18,900 and they've chosen to opt for shares, this will now exceed the fair value of our cash alternative of 18,400. We need to recognize the additional journal entry and we will have to debit our employee cost with 500 credit our share based payment reserve and we may now clear our share based payment reserve account debit share based payment with a 17100 plus the additional 500 and credit our share capital